What's going on print fam? It's your boy Cam and welcome to the third installment of our screen print training video series. Today we're going to be talking about burning and exposing screens in three, two, one, action. The process of using an exposure table like this to burn a screen is pretty straightforward. We place a film positive on the glass, then we lay a screen coated with emulsion over the film. Below the glass is a UV light source. The UV light hardens the areas of the mesh that are not covered by the black on the film positive. If the mesh is covered by black, it is not exposed and can be washed away with water in the washout booth. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Well, not so fast. As a printer, there's a bunch of small technical choices that you have to make to ensure that you've created the proper screen for the project that you're printing. At the start of every day, before I, before I even consider grabbing a screen or my films, I'm going to grab some good old fashioned glass cleaner, some paper towels, and I'm gonna clean the goddamn glass. I'm gonna investigate for any dried emulsion or ink spots that could hinder me from making the best screen possible. Let me rub my eye real quick. Hey, itchy, itchy, itchy. I went with a two color uh, print life graphic. And the reason I chose this particular graphic is because it has a mixture of a spot color and a half tone. Now as a printing pro, it is your responsibility to dive into the details of each individual print project before you start burning screens. You grab your films that have been provided to you and you're gonna take a look at the mock-ups. You're also gonna take a look at the work order to make sure that you have all the necessary information to ensure that you make the proper screens for the job that's going to be printed. So because I know this information, I know that we're going to be putting this spot color, which we may want to print in white, onto a 150S thread. If you look closely, you'll notice that I have drawn three marks on the glass. This is a reference to help us quickly line up our films uh, without having to bust out the ruler and the T-square and all that stuff. So I literally just took a Sharpie marker, drew on the glass, and then I taped over it with uh, clear packing tape. You line up the center line and then line the horizontal lines up like that. Tape the film down. The first screen that we're going to be burning is what's known as a spot color. Uh, the best way to define that is if you look closely, this is as close as I can zoom in, but there's solid lines creating the elements in this graphic, in this case the text. And because this graphic is going to be printing in white, we're going to be using a low mesh screen, a 150S mesh to be exact. And it's time to grab our first screen. Okay. I have my 150 here. Simply load it into the jig, make sure that it's down on the glass as far as it will go. Put my vacuum string in there and I close the lid, engage the vacuum, and hit my light. Now that the screen has been exposed, we remove it from the jig and we place it in our pre-soak tank so that the emulsion can be softening while we work on our next screen. While that screen is exposing, I remove this film set it aside and I'm going to set up this next one here. Now this film has a half tone on it. A 55 line per inch job is going to use a different mesh count. In this case we're going to use a 280. There is a formula to figure out the minimum mesh count you need to use based on the lines per inch and here it is. To calculate the minimum mesh count you need for whatever lines per inch you're doing, here's the formula. It's so easy it's scary. All you're gonna do is take whatever your line per inch count is, in this case it's 55 lines per inch. So we have 55, and you multiply your lines per inch times 4.5, which equals 247. So the minimum mesh count you need is a 240 or 250. Now we don't have a 247 or a 250, but I'm confident that as long as my mesh count is 250, that the dots in this half tone will hold uh, and I'll be able to print through it. So what I do have is a 280. So I'm gonna go grab a 280 mesh and we'll be good to go. Now this is not an S mesh. We find that 280s work just fine on their own. They don't need to be any specialized thread width or anything. Hitting the vacuum blanket. 
When it comes to burning a half tone, instead of doing it at 10 seconds, with this particular unit, we only have to hit it for five seconds. Keep in mind that this emulsion that has just been burned it's still light sensitive, and although fluorescent lights don't have a lot of UV output, they do have enough that if you leave this screen um, before it's been washed out under this for too long, the spots that you had blocked out with the film will slowly begin to expose. You wanna move quickly either way. This one's been soaking, so we're gonna move this out. And we're going to dump, I said dump, that's weird. We're gonna dunk this screen in here and let it be soaking and we're gonna take this screen over to the washout booth. And to ensure that you expose properly, make sure that you're always exposing from the outside of the screen. This is the inside or the squeegee side. This is the outside. Always wash out from the outside. In many cases, you'll find that if you try to uh, wash out from the inside of the screen that the image blows out on you. If you had just did the wash out from the outside, the image would have held up and you'd have been okay and you wouldn't be pissed off and you wouldn't be frustrated and going, why did I ever think that I could get into screen printing? Now, if you don't have a pre-soak tank, it's all good. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer here uh, because you have to wet the mesh and it takes some time for the unexposed emulsion to soften up. Uh, but we've already done that, so I'm gonna turn the pressure washer on. I always tend to focus on the finer details first, like the registration marks. And then once you got the registration marks lined out, then you can move on to the rest of the image. But again, I like to focus on the finer details first, like letters, or little things like the trademark logo. Now, once you've uh, washed out a screen, you gotta dry it. Just from my experience, this is just a long running experience, to make sure that this emulsion is thoroughly hardened into the mesh or into the fabric itself, you need to post expose it to UV light. What we do in Arizona, because we have sun 90% of the time, we just let this thing dry outside in front of the shop. If you don't have the luxury of sun all the time, another option is to um, grab one of those 50 watt LED floodlights that I use in the exposure unit. There's a link to that in the description of this video. You can buy it on Amazon and you can set a fan in front of this along with that UV light so that it's post hardening with the light, which will make the stencil more durable. Dude, I feel like I fumbled around with that, but hopefully you understand what I was trying to say. I'm gonna go let this one dry. And while that screen's drying, I've got my half tone screen that's been soaking and that one's ready to wash out as well. Again, I usually go for the half tones first or the registration marks first. All right, that's it for my basic video on the screen burning process. In the next video, we're gonna talk about common issues that you can have during the screen making process. And I'm gonna do my best to uh, address those issues. Also, let me know in the comments any issues that you've had and if you would like them to be addressed, I'll include all of them in the next video. So leave your comments, leave your questions, and I'll tackle them. All right, Print Fam, thank you so much for hanging with me. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ding the bell, and all that good shit so that you're notified when I upload. Take care of yourself, Print Fam. Peace out.